We're back. Mark's chewing an orange. All right, I need my vitamin C, baby. Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, look at this. Cuts. Yeah, oh, they've been hooking us up. They, they have good... Right out of the gate, you're going to plug, too. We've Sorry. Been... No, they're great. I love their stuff. The shirt and the jacket is cuts. I love cuts. The I'm dick cut. is cuts. Yeah, <laughs> circumcised. No, they... Uh, cuts. I wear a ton of their shit. They're great. Very it's nice. Care package. I love it. They little Gary's wearing cuts. We have we have some of the same shit, so we have to coordinate on the road. I'm like, don't. <laughs> We're both wearing a red hoodie. I'm like, you motherfucker. That's adorable. I've noticed sometimes my openers will look like me. Like I'll have this guy Caleb Sinan open yeah. for me. He's got curly hair and he's a skinny white guy. And I'm like, what am I doing? I got to mix this up. <laughs> I got to get like a like a Yamanika or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we're having fun on the road. I'm, I'm living on the road. Just got back from Albuquerque and you're, El Paso. You, you packed a big one, I heard. That was a big one. There's nothing to do there. It's flat and dry like my ex. It's roadrunner country out there. It's yeah. wacky. It's a whole other world. I've never been. I did. I, I loved Santa Fe. I had a great time. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I thought the crowd was excellent. Yes. I, I even... You ever on the road for so long that you get like, you're like, I'm going to buy something. I just bought like a leather jacket there. I never really? wear leather jackets. But I'm I'm wearing it on this season of uh, Is It Cake on Netflix coming out Ooh. soon. So I'm wearing a leather jacket. Really? And it, it, it was a risk. And then Mikey Day at one point called me cool. And I was like, because I'm rocking a leather I've never been called cool. Because this was I'm rocking it. a fucking leather jacket. The LJ. You rocked a leather jacket the other day. I had to rock it at the Knicks game. And uh, you just feel like you feel like uh, Travolta in yeah. in Bay Ridge and Saturday Night Fever. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> you just feel good. You feel strutting. There's something strutty about a, a leather. I don't even think he wore one in that movie, did he? But it, it feels he did. He did. Oh, he definitely wore. one. I remember the the white. Yeah, of course, of course, the white suit. But uh, watch the hair. But uh, yeah, yeah. The TV's we, we, not on. Guy who thinks we can play the Bee Gees. <laughs> <laughs> guy, guy who thinks we can get away with fucking. <laughs> the like I haven't tried fan. to get their tracks for specials, and they're like, "Oh, that's gonna run you like 50k." I'm like, "Oh, never mind." Yeah, yeah. But, but the, dude, the Bee Gees are so fucking good. So good, and that documentary's killer. It's insane on Max. I yeah. love that shit. It was a different time because they were kind of struggling as a boy band, you know, the acapella, whatever the hell you call that, soprano. And then they hit it with disco, the biggest thing on the planet. There's a there's an LJ. Oh, there we go. Yeah, and the opening got him an idiot. That's, That's Bay Ridge. This movie's so much darker than you remember when you watched so it. So dark. I mean, this is old Brooklyn. I There's mean, nothing yeah. redeeming about that character. Not yeah. one thing. Uh, he can dance. I was I was about to cut <laughs> Oh, <you off>. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he can dance. That's it. Not a great guy, but he'll hit you with one of these, and you're like, all right. But like, so yeah. can Chris Brown, so. There you go. But he, yeah. you know. Yeah, but he, people, people seem to have forgiven him. Have you seen the charts? Yeah. Yeah, still selling yeah. Still tickets. That was my only good line on my last Protect Our Parks. I was so drunk, I couldn't think of anything funny. But uh, they were talking about UFC, and uh, Rogan goes, who do you think the best fighter ever is? And I go, Chris Brown. <laughs> no one laughed. No one cared. But I got it then. I like it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but this movie is dark. It's gangs. It, there's a rape scene. They push the guy off the bridge or whatever. I thought he fell. Oh, maybe he fell. Uh, yeah, he falls. But yeah. his life wasn't going great. Yes, yes. Yeah. That was a different time. Like he, he date rapes a girl and then calls her, can I say this without getting, demonetized, calls her a cunt right afterwards. He's like, now you're a cunt. Yeah. yeah. Like, what the fuck? Don't and, do that. You won't fall off a bridge. Yeah. And we never thought twice about it. You're like, oh, what a movie. Yeah, she's a cunt. picture. Well, I remember, you know what's <laughs> funny? I saw this too young because I remember just seeing all the clips and like, I'd watch The Simpsons and they would like parody it and stuff. So I was like, yeah. oh, this is like the fun dancing movie. And as a kid, I was like shocked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. These movies will make you grow up. Yeah, oh, for sure. When I you mean, watch some of these, you're just like, oh, shit, a dude just dies yeah. off a bridge. It's like such, yeah. a, it's such a New York death. Don't oh, like, 100%. fall off a fucking bridge. And what sort of hurry is he in? the dollar slice. Yep. <laughs> what sort of hurry is he in that he's got to eat two slices of pizza on top of each other? He's got to get back to the hardware store. <laughs> sell that paint. <laughs> but, I mean, Porky's is dark. There's like a weird anti-Semitic ribbon going through it. Uh, yeah, where well, he, he says kite instead of kike. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That was like the big, uh, he, so he was like the dumb racist. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, Animal House is a date rape. They have uh, the- Revenge the, of the Nerds. Revenge of the Nerds as the There's eating like out. There's like two scenes in Revenge of the Nerds that could be on Law & Order SVU. There's yeah. like two legitimately <laughs> dark scenes. Yeah. yeah. They're funny in the movie. They're but, great. But you break them down, you're like- Revenge of the Nerds was on TV the other day, dude. It is a fun movie. Oh, it's killer. The, also, the underdog. band. When, when they're the Ugh. band, 
Young Anthony Edwards. Yeah. I think it's also on Pretty in Pink. He uh, gives his drunken girlfriend to Anthony Michael Hall, the nerd. And he's like, this is me. And then he's like, just take my girl home. Just take her. Oh, I think yeah. I think that was just like 80s like studios. They're like, but where's the rape? Oh. <laughs> we're just like, like no, we need a rape. Uh, which we've now moved on to like, we need a black guy. <laughs> we've come a long way. <laughs> Real progress will be, we'll get a black rape. Hey, there we go. No, There's that was be uh, that out there. I think Roots had that. Oh. <laughs> That was, uh, the 80s had some, it's such a weird decade for movies, dude. Because there's such, there's some really bad flicks. Tarantino it, says the worst decade of film it might history. Be, I think it is, because the 70s and the 90s are insanely good. This is a great movie about Sam talking to his ex. <laughs> <laughs> I have that image on a t-shirt. This is called The Long Goodbye. <laughs> so it really is. Uh, I know, <laughs> I know. Documentary. Oh, I'll take that joke out. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, but we've all been there. I mean, that, I mean, how many road nights where you're talking to your agent or you're talking to your girl and you got a whiskey and you're like, ah, oh, God, I got a six hour flight coming uh, up. I'm the, on saddest, of sleep. the saddest parts of the ham and cheese is 25 cents here. Oh, Jesus those Christ. were the days. That's uh, uh, Mark yeah. always tells me that when he's on the road and he has to pretend he's having a bad time to his girl. He's like, oh, it's brutal out here. I'm, <laughs> so, <laughs> bored. I'm so bored. Uh, yeah. Who said that? Him. Oh, or maybe it was no, you. No, Vitor does it on the road. He, he'll be on the it. phone with. Gary will be on the on the road with me, and he'll be on the phone with his wife, and he has to pretend it's like brutal. We're literally like outside, like tanning. <laughs> he's, he's like, it's fucking, it's, it's taking a toll on me. We're like fucking. Sometimes uh, it's not the bet. We'll be like poolside in Orlando, a lot of leg still, tattoos. Still, still, uh, it's better than better than you know what it could be. Snowstorm in New York. You got a coconut drink with an umbrella in it, with the uh, the white on your nose. Like ah, it's a, it's a gulag down here. You know, I. I, I have a famous story. When the first time I met Joe List, uh, we had the same manager. He put us together for a road gig in Boston. So we had to ride in a car together five hours, never met. So we're just getting to know each other in the car. And we're having a great time talking Seinfeld, talking Chris Rock bits, talking comedy, whatever. And my girl at the time, different girlfriend, called me. And I wanted to get off the phone with her because she just wanted to chat for like an hour. And I wanted to hang out. While you're with phone. another guy in the car? Yeah, she just oh, wanted to talk. Brutal. She liked talking on the phone. And I was I was like, ah, I'm what in shock. What are you pulling up? Who's this? this? Oh, that's oh, Joe Mr. Joe woman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry. Zoom in. I can't see. Holy shit. Wow, that is pretty dead <laughs> that on. That is hilarious. Small mouth. <laughs> no chin. The whole thing. All right. Four yeah. is not big enough, but I've got way. it all. She's got herpes too. The whole <laughs> thing. All right. Well, the story's ruined. But uh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Mark. No, it's it's well, not. Yeah, what, so it, what happened? No great story. But it, I was in shotgun, and I'm like, uh, I got to get off the phone. I'm driving. There's ice patches everywhere. If I if I uh, hit a patch, we'll slide off the road. I wasn't driving. Joe Liss is howling, and he hung up the phone. He goes, "We're gonna be friends forever." Uh, <laughs> right, I'll get my phone. Yeah. No, that's fine. like. Uh, that's like such a obvious guy on the road thing. You can't be on the phone. I know. Too, that would really bug me. I've definitely brought people on the road and they're like fighting with the girl. Yes. And I'm like, what are you doing? I'm paying you to do the gig with me. Take that shit outside. Get and out they're the like, room. no, fuck you. I'm like, please just, you know, we they're don't driving need obviously because I can't drive. Right. And they're right. screaming, you know? Yeah, we don't need that energy in the, in the weekend. Come on. You ever do the share the hotel room with the other cop? Oh, and yeah. I shared one with a guy once and he was just scream fighting with this girl the whole time. Yeah. And uh, and then he snored on top of it. That Woo. was like, like a bad snore. There, I know it's not technically your fault, but you find ways to blame him. Yes, yes. You know? And you really contemplate murder. When someone's snoring, you're like, I'm going to snuff him out with the pillow. I can't take it. I, I was rolling a guy over once. He was. We were both drunk, but he was so drunk that it was like, you know the snoring where you're like, is he going to die? You know, yeah. he's like. Is <laughs> 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 that like a dolphin? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, I rolled his ass. I didn't want to Jimi Hendrix him, so I rolled his ass over, and he stopped snoring for like 10 minutes, and then it started again. It's, so, it's such a hateable quality to snore. That's why there's never been a forensic files about a snorer, because after they caught the guy, you'd be like, but I kind of get it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's so irritating. That's probably a big reason why there's like uh, the women kill the guy over time. You know, women kill men slowly. That's the antifreeze and the oatmeal every time. Mm. Just put a drop in, six months later, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that snoring, I bet. Yeah. I snore. My lady hates it. Do you snore? I snore like a chainsaw. She hates it. 
It you comes don't, but you never really know if you snore unless there's video proof. Yeah. Well, Sean Patton, worst snorer in America. I've been. A, I've, I could see that. I've lived in a house with five guys. I got a brother. I got my dad snores like crazy. My dad's I've, a snorer. All dads snore. All dads snore. You, you, somebody, you, you shoot a load into a woman. She has a baby. You start snoring. I don't yeah. know why that is. <laughs> <laughs> or and you start sneezing like an asshole. <laughs> ah, ah! <laughs> oh, that's dude. I gotta, I gotta fucking peeve. Is the, the the guy who sneezes? What is that? Just like, I have a guy. He has, he has two coffees for some reason on the plane. Or no, he had maybe one coffee, but he's holding the bag, going right by me. Goes, ah, you. What are you doing? What's the he net? said, a Jew. Like horn. <laughs> he said, a Jew. Yeah. yeah. What's I guess he... that's what he was doing. But yeah, yeah. If you, if you break it down. But... but my dad sneezes like, it, it's like a fucking air horn. It's like, ah, I'm like, what is this? You hear birds flapping away from the house. It's crazy. Uh, Morgan Murphy had a great tweet once. She said, a haunted house, but just dad snoring. Or, or just dad sneezing. I fucked it up. But yeah, yeah. she. Uh, that was a funny tweet. But He's got some good shit. She's funny. Yeah. Uh, Morgan Murphy. Shout out. Good bits. But yeah, uh, Sean Patton, worst snorer on the planet. And we've done a million gigs together all over Louisiana back in the old poor comedy days. He got a sleep apnea thing. The mask. Oof. I, I want to fuck him in the ass because he, he sleeps like a baby. He's silent now. Wow. It works. Ugh, such a sad packing thing, though. You're, it is. Those weren't made for road comics. Those were made for people that never leave. There's something so sad about putting that in a duffel bag. I know, you know? I know. It's like a sign of aging, and yeah. it's like you look like Bane, you know? But you see his fat ass on the on the air mattress with that air thing and with that mask on, and you're like, thank God for technology. <laughs> I think an air mattress with one of those is the saddest images I've ever seen. The air mattress. The air mattress and the sleep apnea Ooh, mask? It's a bad, it's a bad combo. It's a Connect bad them. look. Not a good combo. It's the opposite of Burt Reynolds naked on a bearskin rug. Yeah. Is a fat guy, sleep apnea mask with the air mattress. We have a fat guy here. Peters? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, That's what we call a misdirect. Everyone looked at me. <laughs> well, I didn't want to, you know, oh, he's God. not on the show. He's the producer. Oh, he is on the show, but yeah, well, you on know. camera, yeah. Are you on camera? Never? But every now and then you'll walk in and give stuff to us, and then the whole frame is taken up. <laughs> but <laughs> Do you, are you, uh, do you snore or no? Uh, I think so. You must. I think yeah. Six, six. Oh, okay. Girl snores are cute, though. They're like, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you still put a pillow over their head, but you oh, do it yeah. with a smile on your face. Of you... course. No, I, I'll be in the bed with a girl, and sometimes she'll snore. Winnie always fucking snores. Mm. Winnie is an old bag, dude. Where is Winnie? She'll be back. All right. She'll be back. All right. Taking a little trip. Uh-oh. No, no, she's coming back. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm on, I'm on, the, I'm on FaceTime with... My girlfriend, and she's driving. She's got road rage. And someone cuts her off in L.A., and Winnie's in the passenger seat and just flies off. Uh, <laughs> just flies off. Oh, that's great. And she's, like, screaming, like, fuck you! Uh, and then she, like, I see Winnie just collapsed into a fucking, <laughs> into a pocketbook. So I'm like, she got a cushion. It was, like, yeah, her airbag. Okay, good. She was fine, but I was like, oof. I just see those little paws go, like, <laughs> out the window. Just picturing her flying through the fucking windshield. And then yeah. just, but I feel like she would land on her feet. Yeah. Yeah. She's a survivor. <laughs> She's basically like that Hawaiian lady on the dash, just, you know, bobbing and weaving. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. The white power cat at the Chinese restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> they love that cat. They do. What is it? I don't know. That's it's a weird. It's like Hello Kitty. Yeah. That, is that Japanese? Japanese. Japanese. Yeah. yeah. We're racist. So, but so yeah. what were you doing last night? Yeah, I want to hear all I'm, about I'm it. I'm a little baby. hungover. Did a gig. I uh, did Garden of Laughs. Crazy. Uh, I didn't realize how big it was. Apparently, they raised over like $2 million for this charity. Hell yeah. And it's like, you know, crazy lineup. Me, Chrissy D. Oh, there's me and Chris D, D with my favorite basketball player as a kid. Had his poster on my wall, John Starks. Oh, that's The Starks. legend. I love him. Legendary. Oh, so, I, I had a good set. Luckily, I text both of you guys my opener. Yeah. I, I had to go bullet on this lineup. Great opener. And I opened the benefit where they Steve Sharippa from The Sopranos comes out, and I'm trying not to laugh because his voice I just associate with Bacala. Sure. So he's like, we did a lot of good this year. Like, oh, let me try to keep a straight face here. <laughs> this was Marie Zidi. <laughs> <laughs> Karen. <laughs> Karen. That Karen was Zidi. Yeah. So set the stage. You're at Madison Square Garden. MSG, big deal. Twice in a week, by the way. Yeah, we were there earlier. Yeah. And then... um. 
We got to talk about that later. We'll talk later. But uh, yeah, so we're at. I, I'm at the garden. Uh, crazy gift bag too. I got. Really? I have now two Morel Knicks jerseys. Custom. Oh! They gave me one when I made. Uh, and I got a Walt Frazier bobblehead. All these oh! like great gifts. They gave me like a little suitcase that opens with like the kids thanking you on a video. It's incredible. Oh. But oh, there we are. Uh, John Stewart, CC Sabathia, Dwight Gooden. This is the first time oh. I ever saw my agent. Uh, Mike is a crazy baseball fan. He's the biggest Yankees fan. So mm. I watch him. Like I've never seen him get starstruck. He works with pretty famous clients. Sure, but Kevin Hart and all. Yeah, he reps some big dogs. But he goes up to uh, he goes up to Doc Gooden and he's like, Doc, you know, like I read you, all your stuff. I've read your book. I, you know, your story. And I was like, Damn, I've never seen him like, you know. Yeah. And Doc, Chris is a big bidding a special about Doc Gooden. Oh, that's right. About how uh, he, his dad pretended he had special needs to get better seats at a game. Oh, and it was right. the Dwight Gooden no perfect hitter. game. Oh, yeah. perfect. Wait, is he the, no hitter. No, no hitter. hitter. He's not the acid guy, is he? No, no that's Doc no. Ellis. Sorry, wrong Doc. That's a crazy story, though. Great too. story. Guy drops acid and throws a... Well, he's a medical doctor. He can do what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, who else? Oh, yeah. oh JB. Yeah, he was cool. They, they, the pulled, they did not want me in that photo. <laughs> that, was, that was JB, uh, Susie, and John. I think John just saw me standing there, and he goes, "Sam, get in here." Just to, yeah, he's a nice guy. That's but, killer. Uh, hey, Jimbo. Yeah, 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 we had a lot. I got brought on by Henrik Lundqvist and Mike Richter, the two best Ranger goalies ever. Legends. Henrik Lundqvist, hot as shit. So you had yeah. the bullet spot. What happened? Wait, no, I go great bullet. Jacket. I go. I go bullet, and I. Uh, my opener is uh, two mil two million dollars, guys. We did it, and it's all going to Diddy's Legal Defense Fund, hey. and that it crushed. And I'm like, thank God, I got an applause rate. So I'm like, I'm in. I'm. It was one of those things where I'm like, can I say this? You know, it's like everyone's there. Like literally every person, every New York person, like M McEnroe's in the crowd. Oh my God, Ben wow. Stiller. Talked to McEnroe for a while. I did a, I did a benefit for him like a couple years ago. He's great. He's cool. And I they were a bad. They were a terrible crowd. And I was struggling to be listened to. At one point, a lady wouldn't stop talking. I go, lady, shut the hell up. And I just saw Mac and go, go yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. And I was like, all right, that's a that's a cool dude there. Was Dolan there? The uh, He was. I, we Knicks? talked to him. Yeah. Oh, wow. He said, you better be funny. I said, I'll try. Oh, jeez. I hate that you better be funny. <laughs> you got it, but you know. But it's oh. Dolan. Yeah, no, he was he was very nice. And then uh, Daryl from Run DMC. Whoa, very shit. Very cool. It's weird when you talk to someone like that because you have to pretend – I mean, obviously, I know who he is, but you don't want to like. What do you do in a conversation? So he's like, "You're from New York." I was like, "Yeah, yeah." How about you? And I'm like, "I know he's yeah, yeah. right." Run DMC. Right. Yeah. yeah, I know he's from Queens. Wow. Yeah. Legendary. Who? Are who's this? Oh, Ben Stiller, Victor Cruz, Heather McMahon over there, uh, McEnroe, Steve Sharippa, and oh wow, Chris e. Ben Stiller, very cool guy, Knicks fan. Hell yeah. Big what was Knicks this in fan. support of? It's Garden of Dreams. This is their foundation. It's like it, for it's who? Young, kids young kids, and, and yeah, it's it's a good charity. Awesome. I, I've heard about this shit forever. Uh, hey! Oh, dude, that. Luis Guzman was the coolest dude ever. He hung with us like all night. He really? Was, uh, yeah, he's got a weed company in Vermont. He has like he got like a big place in Vermont, and he uh, he gave me. His, he's like, take my number. He's like, put my number in your phone. I was like. Picking up Luis Guzman. Here. That's awesome. Oh, your girlfriend's like, any women hit on you? I'm like, Luis Guzman. <laughs> <laughs> hit on me. It's like, uh, no. So yeah, Chrissy and I went late. We 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 drank pretty late and uh, had a had a nice one. And uh, oh, great. Yeah, he loved Chris. He was talking to Chris all night too. And uh, fun fun gig, man. Crazy. When you think of Luis Guzman, what do you think of immediately? What role? Boogie Nights, probably. Same. Yeah, yeah. He was also great in anger management. Oh. He was great in that movie. Weird pull. And, and McEnroe. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he, uh, I also think of, yeah, McEnroe was really cool. He, he, uh, he's I a Queens guy. He is. Yeah. yeah. I think he went to Dalton. I thought he was Upper East Side guy. Oh. I know he went to Dalton, but. Um, well, he could be Dalton, go to Queens, okay. or from Queens. He, um, he, yeah, what were we talking? Oh, yeah. Luis Guzman was telling stories about just smoking blunts. He said, like, he was telling me, he's like, I got my own weed company. Uh, and I was like, oh, yeah, what's it called? He's like, Get Nice. I was like, I, I was asking, like, where does that come from? He goes, On the set of Boogie Nights. And uh, and I was like, Oh, it's one of my favorite movies. They always ignore that when you give yes, the compliment, yes. you know, because I'm like, Oh, so I just out of habit. It's like, if it's on TV, that's a movie you finish, you sure, know, and it's sure. a long movie. Yeah. But uh, he's like, Yeah, we would all be smoking blunts, like me, the whole crew. 
you know, everyone would be getting high. And then I get on set and Paul Thomas Anderson would be like, are you high? He's like, nah, nah, I'm just getting nice. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's, that's good. Your company. It's hilarious. You're just doing drugs and you're like, no, I'm good. Yeah. Pull up, good. pull up some photos of Guzman in the Lower East Side in the oh. 70s. There's some amazing, because I follow Retro New York on Instagram and there's some, some great ones of Guzman, just uh, like Avenue B, holding a knife for some reason. <laughs> you know, and he, he was just a bad. Uh, I mean, it might be hard to find. He was but. so cool, man. And then, uh, yeah, I was just watching The Limey the other day, and he's he's awesome in that movie. Oh, there's one. I mean, look at that. That's fucking New York City. Who knows what year that is? I mean, he he is the real deal. He's been great for a long time, and I feel like you know what's funny. De Stefano was talking to him, and he goes, "You know, my girlfriend is uh, Puerto Rican, and." On my sitcom, we were, we were trying to get, like, it got canceled, but we wanted you to play her dad. Mm -hmm. And he goes, would never do it. And then just kept talking about something else. Oh, He didn't mean it disrespectfully. He's like, no, I only do, like, good stuff is how he meant uh... it. <laughs> but Chris lost it laughing, you know? It's like, because he was so, he didn't mean it disrespectfully, but it was just such a hilarious. He's like, I don't do sitcoms. I do, like, he does, like, if you look at his body of work, it's, like, cool shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Wow, that's incredible. What a what a gang of guys. And it's been a great week for comedy in New York because uh, I went to the Patrice O'Neill benefit party. Oh, is that it, cool? It's just a tape. Rachel was tipsy. When Rachel's drunk, it's fun as shit. It's fun. And it's, like, Burr, Keith, um, everybody's there. Fucking Club Soda Kenny is there. We're all howling, laughing. They're all making fun of Rich Voss. Gaffigan's Soda's there. Soda's doing an impression here or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure, Cat Williams. <laughs> That's killer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, great. And, you know, Burr, when Burr's in town, it's very exciting. It's just uh, it's just been a great We Love went to Burr. a Knicks game. It's yeah, just we, a we hit a Knicks game. We saw Dante DiVincenzo score 11 threes. What a fucking game to be at. Burr told me he saw us on TV. No way. Just, I was just watching the game, and I was like, oh, there they fucking are. Ah. And they just saw us going like this behind the bench. Oh, that's great. Because Mark would not believe our coach Tibbs is like, if you don't know him, he's like a psycho, but in the yeah. best way. That's why the team is so good. They're, like, they're so disciplined because he's just like, a military guy, you know? Yeah. And they're up 30 against Detroit. Was, it, they have, Detroit's got a pretty bad team out there, and their star players hurt. Yeah. He's yelling at them every play, like, what the fuck? It was wild. And Mark's like, why is he still yelling? <laughs> I was getting triggered, because I was like, it felt like your friend's dad, like, go to bed, you fucking kids, you know, like at a sleepover. And he was so angry. He, he never gave a smile, nothing. Not a smirk. He'll occasionally smirk. Okay. There's a, there's a look. Get up. Up. Look up. Jalen Brunson. Tom Thibodeau. Uh, fist bump. That's like it was like one moment last year where he finally like gave half a smile. All but, right. but it means a lot when you get That's half a true. smile. That's true. It's like the guy who never laughs. Yes. Gonna, remember William Stevenson at the comedy show? Yes. Seller? The most miserable guy ever. Never God laughed. rest his soul. But when you got that guy to laugh. It, it felt. It met the it world. Felt good. Yeah. Well, look there up he the, is Thibodeau. Look, no, look up the video of the fist bump. Oh, yeah, it's like ten seconds. It's probably why the team's so good, though. You gotta, you gotta admit, it's like Singapore. No one's fucking committing a crime in Singapore because they'll they'll flog your ass. There you go. It's the same with Thibodeau. This is it. Look at this. Look at this little smile it gives. Jeez. <laughs> that was that's the most subtle thing on the planet. That's a, but it was a big moment. Yeah. That's what he, but then he does. He loves Brunson. Oh, like, he yeah. loves the team. Clearly, it's just how he is. He's yeah. like an unmarried coach who just like like i think like one woman wanted to marry him and he was just like no i'm only in the basketball like i just watch footage <laughs> like he's that type of dude I do you respect that. that though i respect yes. how committed he is to what he does i yeah. think he's a and he was also an assistant coach on the 90s knicks where everyone talks about the grit he was an assistant coach on like the celtics team that won the championship and i think he's like he's known for being a defensive guru like he's a, wow. he's a badass for sure like he's but they did a poll recently in the nba who's a coach you would least want to play for and he finished first because he'll play his guys like 45 minutes a game and that's like players are like that's fucking hard it hurts yeah but the knicks are just mostly guys who are like yeah i'll do it yeah it's a tough gang out there they're real scrappy they're so fucking scrappy, right? Yeah. And Josh Hart comes over and fist bumps Chris DeStefano. I was like, that was pretty. That was pretty cool. That was. I'm cool. out. I got a laugh from one of them on the gum. Was That's that right. hard? They, yeah, they have a little thing where they all the players come to like grab gum. They love mints and gum. I don't yeah. know why. Josh Hart's like before he goes in, he's like grabbing watermelon gum and just like chewing or like spearmint gum. They're just like grabbing and putting in their mouth before they go out. I'm like, you're playing with gum? Yeah, they love gum. But uh, the worst part was, first of all, just 
grateful to be able to go to a game Same. at the height of this Knicks buzz because I feel like they're really humming right now, and so it's we're we're lucky to get to see that live and be you know courtside. Yeah, but. They, we knew we were going to get on the jumbo, and it's a star set of the fair. It's Edie Falco, Tracy Morgan, Chris Rock, Cicely Strong, all these giant you know celebrities, and then us knuckleheads. And we're like, we got to do something funny for when the camera's on us. We got to kill this jumbo truck. We, we got put, three. We put too much pressure on. There's not a lot you can do when you have to be clean. Yeah, and you and you've got like three of you five seconds of just no audio. Like, yeah. how are you going to be funny? So the the gag we come up with for me, Norman and Chris is like, let's pretend we're fighting then turn to the camera and wave. Yeah. Didn't translate very Didn't well. translate at all. The, even the woman, as she's like walking away, was like, I thought you'd be funnier. Oh! And we were like, ah, shit. And then, blew it. yeah, we blew it. But, uh, yeah, it was tough, but it was tough. Well, she just the camera's in your face. She goes, "Smile, smile," but you're we're thinking, "Well, we're not going to smile. We're going to fight." But you don't know that, so now we look like weirdos because we're fighting, and then we're smiling. The whole we had thing. one take, and we blew it. We and blew then, it, and then uh, we're in the we're in the like eating area, and Chris Rock walks by, and he looks at, he looks at our table and goes, "Comedy." Yeah, That's pretty cool, highlight right? of my life. Highlight of my life. I'm eating a bowl of ice cream. He says, "Comedy," You're and then heaven. And uh, then we uh, he walked by again. He goes, "Couple of killers." And then, Rock. Um, yeah, I bet that we didn't the say king. one word to each other. The king. Yeah, we we're like, let's let's leave this as it is. Right. Yeah, yeah. Let's not ruin. Some both of us are like, let's try to top that. No, we'll ruin it. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta leave, leave that moment. Love Rock. I had a line loaded. I was gonna say, uh, "Tell special tomorrow." <laughs> That's your line. Well, this, is, this is like your jerk store. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna try to run into him again. Just yeah. To... Well, it just takes it off us. It's about comedy. It's exciting. Dave Attell never is a special. It's exciting. But you know, it's better than my Bill Burr P Diddy mishap. So you so. take a shot at the king. You better hit him. Yeah, it wasn't a shot though. It's just like a um, if, if he walks over, I don't want to be like, "How are you?" Cold out, you know. Uh, traffic was bad. I don't want to have that. I want to have something. You're interesting. looking at your notes. You're like, uh, <laughs> "P Diddy's back in the news." <laughs> right, right. Something about Nickelodeon. Exactly, um, exactly. That's what I've been opening with, by the way, in what? New York. I just walk up and I go, "Hey, sorry, I'm late. I was jerking off to the Nickelodeon oh. doc." Murders every time. <laughs> it also killed some childhoods. But. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a different kind of slime. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nickelodeon, man. I, it's bad. Do you hear what happened? Even the Rugrats came out and said they got touched. <laughs> Tommy Pickles, he wouldn't be anywhere with it. <laughs> Doug, funny. <laughs> got funny touched. Yeah, not so funny what happened to him. Yeah, there we go. Even the Hey Arnold kid. Uh, that's why they call him Skeeter. <laughs> All right. Skeet, skeet, skeet. So they interviewed Keenan Thompson today, or he had some interview on some radio show, and he was like, yeah, that was despicable. It was supposed to be a safe space for kids. Sure. He's like, they need to keep looking. So I think there's more dirt. I think there's uh, more dirt because I didn't. That sounds bad, but I, I thought there was going to be more. Like there was some bad shit, but I thought it was going to be like this unloading of Epstein, Harvey, P. Diddy style conspiracy. But it was like one guy was weird with a kid. No, I think there was kids. a few. There was a few guys. There were two pedos and one abusive boss. That was basically the side. All right. Abusive boss. I can it shouldn't be in the same sentence as I mean, pedos, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's like when they tried to cancel Shane. And, when they, and it was like, yeah. people who have been canceled this year, Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein, and Shane Gillis. Yeah. Like, <laughs> one of these is not like the others. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, but yeah, great week. What a week in New York. And now we're here. We're Good back. Times. Doing the pod. How about that P. Diddy shit, though? It is pretty crazy, right? What, yeah, really I don't know incredible. a ton about it, but is, they have him? I don't know. They he have, flew. He fled. He, they don't have him? You mean physically have him? Yeah, is he in custody or no? Oh, I don't know. I don't uh, know. No, I think oh. he flew to an island where there's no... Uh, Usually a safe haven for bad people. Yeah. Islands. Well, this island has no jurisdiction. What's the word? Extradition. Extradition. Mm. Like, so there's no legality where he's he's allowed to be there. So it's a smart island to pick. It's weird, like, you Epstein's. know, if you're an accomplice, you know, obviously you get in trouble. But if you just fly him to the island, mm -hmm. do you get in trouble? Hmm. Like, clearly yeah. he's on the run. The weird yeah. move is this drug mule. Are you aware of this guy? Who? Drug mule. Yeah, he's got a drug. You know you're a bad person when you don't just have a dealer, you have a mule? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's like a big deal to have a mule, right? Yeah. 
And a little offensive to mules. <laughs> mules are just like, hey, I carry shit on my back, up a mountain. Now I'm an asshole. Yeah, this guy just sucks <laughs> stuff up his ass. <laughs> yeah, right. It's crazy. Mules are like, what do I have to do with putting heroin up your ass? And this is a, a white guy who played in the NCAA. My, what, what a fall from grace. <laughs> Yeah. Late. Not exactly a Cinderella story there. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep trying. Uh, <laughs> Take it to the hole. Uh, <laughs> there we go. All right. That's uh, no, that's uh, a weird one. And he's like, I mean, I was talking to someone the other day, and, and she told me she's she's been to his parties. Really? She's like, I've been to some of his parties. I'm like, how was it? She's like, I mean, you see some shit. And I'm like, not like that. She's like, no, not like that. But what they, you, you know, a lot of famous people are there, obviously, mm. and and. Uh, I would go. I mean, if, uh, who, who would turn down a P. Diddy party? I mean, look, if I didn't know about Epstein, I probably would have gone to Epstein's. Like, look, of course. We had Louis Black in here talking about it, and, and I was like, oh, a, a crazy dinner with a bunch of interesting weirdos? I'll do it. Yeah. And I, I guess this? you got to change. Uh-oh. This is Cat Williams talking about P. Diddy parties. Okay. That was my only goal. I didn't want to... Get with a white woman because I was scared she might have me running down the street like Jonathan Majors. The truth of the matter. So I stayed away from that. Now I've had to turn down fifty million dollars four times, four times, just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right? Because uh, P Diddy be wanting the body, and you gotta tell him no. You got to tell him no. Wow. I mean, Damn. this is like Nostradamus here. Yeah. I mean, uh, no, people said this about P. Diddy that, like, he definitely, from what I've heard from people have just told me, they're like, yeah, he would, like, sexually humiliate guys. Mm. And yeah. uh, I know, heard he would pay male prostitutes to fuck his girlfriends. Yeah. Which my wife would love, <laughs> I'm sure. But he'd pay men to sexually humiliate them by forcing him onto their track. And uh, <laughs> uh, he would uh mo money mo idol. <laughs> no, he would uh and he would make women is what they'd say. We can't get in trouble for speculating, can we? Yeah, he would pay Alleg allegedly. allegedly, allegedly put that right up. Top. Allegedly, let's call this let's call this episode allegedly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he would like have these women, these sex workers, just he'd be like, "You have sex with him. You have sex with this person. You do that." And it's like, if you're at one of these parties. First off, like, that's horrible that's happening, but also, like, say no. Ah, uh, yeah. You could be like, no, I'm here to people watch, not to fuck random holes. Yeah. You don't have to just do it. I don't know. Maybe there's some uh, coaxing and... No, maybe you're right. Maybe there's, there's like, you know, intimidation. Yes, or, that's no, the word And I'm blackmail. Apparently, he's got blackmail. cameras in every room. Uh, so he has you doing a compromising thing. Now you, you have better hope you're having a good dick day when those cameras. <laughs> oh, when you're, oh, when yeah. you're peeing, you're like, "Fuck, I'm having a bad dick yeah. day." <laughs> yeah. They got me at my lowest. All right? Don't give me that wide lens. Those <laughs> <laughs> oh, zooming in, they're like, "Still nothing here." <laughs> the hell? Now does he change his day? Because he went from Puff Daddy to Puffy to P Diddy to Diddy to probably Diddy, <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually Inmate yeah. Five Hundred Six Hundred One. Yeah. <laughs> Did yeah. he do it? Um, he goes by Love now. Love? Yes, that's his new... That's a good move. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you change it up. Interesting. A little yeah. confusing in the tennis game. Uh, yeah, apparently Kanye is going by Jews are okay. <laughs> Everyone's changing it up. Just the opposite. Yeah. Uh, I know. But Love is, you know. Woo. That's really what he's going by, Love? Rappers really change their name a lot. He's a 90s rapper, too. It's really amazing that, like... I mean, I feel like even if it wasn't... <laughs> You know, when you come up in the 90s, it was so much homophobia in rap. Yeah. It still is. But, like, maybe not as much as rap, but in, like, you check those fucking comment sections. Oh, yeah. It gets fucking heated. Uh, and then, you know, obviously, uh, the violence of the 90s was, like, crazy. I feel like it's just not, like, now rappers are, like, more in their feelings, I feel like. Oh, you know? yeah. Drake is all feelings yeah. and all that. J. Cole, it's a lot about heartbreak and all that. But, yeah, yeah you're right. It's it's really gone from homophobic to, like, gay renaissance. You know, it, we're having, like, Nas X, little Nas X, and then the yeah. P. Diddy stuff. And uh, Well, it's not the same as gay. This is, like, well, trafficking yeah. shit. Meek Mill. But, yeah. yeah. So well, He's not gay, is he? I think he was dead. There's, a, there's a audio tape going around right now of allegedly... Puff Daddy having sex with Meek Mill. 
Really? There's an audio tape. It's pretty wild if you want to hear it. Remember, really? remember, remember those on rap albums when there would just be like skits? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In between yeah. the songs, you're like, who are these for? <laughs> it's like this guy's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. Then all of a sudden they're doing like an in living color thing. Wow. Remember that shit? Yeah, I remember that. It'd be like Eminem. It'd be on like anything. Yes. Sip it on jizz and juice. All right. <laughs> Meek Mill. <laughs> he heard somebody had a great tweet. He said, uh, y'all don't respect a, a black men in America. I'm moving to Ghana. And one guy wrote, he's Ghana. Suck a bunch of dick over there. <laughs> I can't remember who tweeted that. That's pretty funny. I lost it. Oh, poor Meek. Yeah. I don't know if you want to hear this, but it's... It's funny? It's not funny at all. Why? It's them having hardcore sex. Well, okay. let's play it. Let's play it. Okay. Oh, can we up. get in trouble for this? All right, go no, for it. It's weird how we can play this, but not the Bee Gees. <laughs> what a system we've created. <laughs> okay, I think this is it. Yeah, what, this is, it could this, be anything. This is reaching. This sounds take more that, like Serena that. Williams serving. <laughs> oh, oh. How is this? What what proof is there that this uh, no, is? No, internet said it was true. Oh, oh like, get out of here! It's getting a little that. too easy to, yeah, to do this shit. Come I think. On. Deep fake. You look how sad Elliot Gould looks after that. <laughs> <laughs> He's That's so disappointed in me. Can the audience see Elliot Gould just so they get these jokes? Okay, yeah. okay. Dude, uh, old. Yeah, this is weird. It's. I mean. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't love all of it because it's like Nickelodeon, P. Diddy, sex trafficking. It's like we we crave all this dark shit. I don't know why. Like you, you make a, a trans joke or a black joke and you're public enemy number one. But then like we're like, give me true crime. Yeah. Give me pedophilia. Oh, a Michael Jackson doc. Oh, bring it on. This is so exciting. Epstein. Ooh, baby. I'm like. This is the bad shit we should be well, not yeah, I mean, watching. Dude, Homeland Security is fucking at his um, two of his places. That's a big deal. Uh, of course, they arrested his kids. I mean, this is uh, it's funny that you see that uh, his neighbor is Ridley Scott. No, it's <laughs> funny that that's like there's all these sex parties going on, and he's just like like probably reading a Napoleon book. He's like, yeah. gotta get this, <laughs> gotta nail this here. Uh, yeah, I mean. I don't know, man. It, yeah, it's it, look. It's America. It's innocent until proven guilty. But this, it looks bad. Yeah, we could say that. I guess. I just don't. I don't uh, subscribe. Like I, I haven't seen. I've never saw the Michael Jackson. I'm a Patreon for <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I never saw the Michael Jackson. I didn't watch the Nickelodeon. I don't. I watched, wanna... I watched the Michael Jackson one out of curiosity, just because he was such an icon. Mm -hmm. Sure. There's a weird thing with Michael, where like, look, did he do that? I don't know. Did he do something inappropriate? Probably. And it's like, we are like, when it comes to Michael, it's like, there's this weird thing where it's like, we feel almost maybe complicit. That's why we can't, because we love his music so fucking much. Sure. I don't know anyone who doesn't love Michael Jackson. Well, it still plays. I hear it at Target and shit. Sure. It's still around. That's my point. We're like, R. Kelly, you don't really hear as much. Yeah. Michael, you fucking hear. Maybe, you know, maybe, depends maybe. where you are, but. And he's older, so I feel like it's in the zeitgeist. It's in yeah, the maybe. tapestry of America, whereas R. Kelly's more current. Maybe R. Kelly, it'll like come back in like 30 years, and kids will be like, this guy's really good. I, I, mean, I bet you're right. We should look who... Yeah. He did what? <laughs> All right. That's, that's how happen. you find out about shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, fucking uh, Elvis married a fourteen. Literally just going to Elvis. That's yeah. what my mind was. Jerry Lee going. Lewis, all these guys. Charlie Chaplin was fucking a fourteen year old. So was Led Zeppelin. Yeah. But he did it silently. <laughs> True. Yeah. Good point. Good Zeppelin. point. I thought it was Robert Plant, right? Was... Robert Plant, yeah. yeah. Zeppelin. Zeppelin, yeah. So speaking about uh Nostradamus here's Cat Williams on Michael Jackson. All right. Clean that underwear drawer before the hot weather hits. Make the switch to sheath and stay fresh and sweat free all season long. Sheath underwear is unlike anything else. It comes with two pouches. Put your dick in the one and your balls in the other. Keeps everything separated so things don't get stuck together and turn into a sweaty mess. I haven't checked, but I bet you I'm wearing. Let me see. Yep, I am wearing sheath. Look at that. Hey, I bet Always. I'm wearing it too. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Always wearing sheath. I don't know where. There it is. Yeah. There's your logo. 
With an added bonus of making your package look awesome, you truly can't go wrong. You can even build your own underwear bundle on the website to make sure you have a pair for every day of the week. Go to sheathunderwear.com and use code DRUNK to get 20% off your first order, plus Sheath Underwear's 100% money-back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code DRUNK at Sheath Underwear. Support the show, support your balls, and I gotta tell you, I wear them every day, I love them, and... uh I really, I really do, and I get props from the lady when I wear them. Yes, gets her in the mood. I get a little, uh, you know, get a little bump from it. Gives you a little help. Bulge, and then the bulge. the lady, they make lady stuff too that looks good. So get on it, sheath, sheath. What year? Fuck like- Michael. He spent his whole life trying to be a white woman. His whole motherfucking life. <laughs> then as soon as the nigga get in trouble. Now he want to be surrounded by Muslims and shit. Michael, you ain't no motherfucking Muslim. You can't even be a Muslim. You got a white woman pork face. How you gonna be a Muslim? Half your face is pork, Michael. Fuck Michael. Don't get on TV and lie to us and tell us shit don't make no fucking sense. This nigga climbing up in trees and shit. Talking about, don't you climb trees? No, motherfucker. We got bills and shit. (laughs) Take your Peter Pan ass and make some peanut butter or some shit. Telling niggas that done paid good money for him Telling us shit that don't make no goddamn sense Talking about he put his nigga dick in a white woman And came out with two babies that ain't mixed Who the fuck do you think you talking to, nigga? I'm a grown motherfucking man You put a nigga dick in a white woman And got two blonde, blue-eyed babies? Nigga, fuck you Fuck you One of them babies' name is Blanket You can't name no nigga baby Blanket You can't name a nigga baby nothing soft Now Blanket well, will come Michael doing. We've been knowing how Michael was. If you don't believe me, tell me when's the last time Michael was in a relationship that you believed. <laughs> don't worry, I'll wait. I'll wait all this <laughs> when was the last time you was like, Michael is fucking the shit out of that bitch? Not never. <laughs> that motherfucker showing up to press conferences. He got Emmanuel Lewis sitting on his motherfucking lap. And we like, oh, that's cute. Forgetting the fact that Emmanuel Lewis was 26 motherfucking years old at the goddamn time. <laughs> Have you seen this special? Oh, no, no. Oh, he just opened the balcony and he picked a little boy. The thing. He never stops talking. He never stops moving. It's amazing. I like him. I got to watch this. Michael can't fucking lie to me. I'm a grown motherfucking man. I love bitches. That's my shit. I love bitches. So if you go to my house, there's certain shit at my house that ain't for me. It's for bitches. I got a regular bed with regular pillows, and I got two pillows with a silk cover on it. That's not for me. That's in case bitches want to come over there and they don't feel like wrapping their goddamn hair. They ain't got to fuck up their perm. Yeah. Because I love bitches. That's my shit. If you go to my house, it's Alizé at my house. I don't drink no motherfucking Alizé, but bitches do. <laughs> and when they come over there, I want them to feel comfortable. Now, what the fuck would Michael need in his house if he was trying to make little boys feel comfortable? I don't know, a goddamn amusement park, some motherfucking oh, animals. Oh, some... that's killer. That's killer. killer. Smart Damn. shit. That is a nice turn right there. Yeah. You kind of knew his head in there, but the way he built that, that was that was pretty fucking good. That's what I love about comedy, and I'm a fucking nerd, and I'm, I'm going to go into it, but this is a guy, this is some black dude from Atlanta? I don't think he's from Atlanta. Is that from? I think it's Atlanta. But I might have been Florida. Maybe you're right. Maybe I think he Florida. grew up in Florida. No, I, he grew up in Florida. I think he came up in Atlanta as a comic. I think so. Either way. But can we get him on here? Do you think Cat would come on? I don't know. I think he's too hard Cincinnati, to get. Cincinnati, Ohio. Jesus. But he came up in Florida, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Right. I think he might have been a street performer for a minute. He was a street guy for a while. I mean, he was like, he ran away from home young, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a brilliant guy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm talented. a fan. Yeah, I think he's really funny. So funny. I never so make cool. it through a full, long interview, and I listened to his whole I did Shannon too. Sharp one, and it sure as hell wasn't for Shannon Sharp. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. He's, a, he's a smart dude, but whatever. My point is, he's a guy up there being hilarious, wearing a green fucking velvet suit with a crazy perm coming out this way and a little mustache and all this jewelry and a giant belt buckle. But that structure, this comedic, there's so much structure in his act, like the Alizé to build it up with the silk sh- the silk pillows and then to turn it with the amusement Agreed. park. That is comedy, baby. That's stand-up. It's a craft. Well, I think it's almost like those people who uh, 
take their outfit that seriously, you usually don't have that kind of attention to the craft. Yeah, yeah, and he, true. And so you're like, oh, cool, you did everything. Yes, yes. But I, I equate it to boxing or UFC where you're like, these are two guys slugging it out and getting punched in the face and hitting with elbows and knees to the fucking ribs and all that. And it just looks like two Neanderthals going. But there's so much technique and right. fundamentals and, and uh, training involved. And they know what they're doing. And there's all this jujitsu and yeah. uh, Muay Thai. That's why I love it, because it's it looks like this silly goofball guy just being funny. But there's there's so much technique I love hidden it. in it. I love it, man. No, it's... Uh... It's cool. I'm, I'm doing, I'm in the weird stretch now. I had a new bit hit. I have such a low self-esteem right now when I have a new bit hit because I'm, I'm starting from scratch. Yeah. That I'm like, I bet someone has it. Anytime I say like a weird historic, like I did Han Dynasty, I'd say that as part of the, the joke was like, uh, when people make fun of people who don't have kids being like, you, you won't have, you won't have a legacy. Someone said that to me, you won't have a legacy. And I was like, you're a Long Island realtor. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, legacy. yeah. <laughs> like, let's calm down. This isn't the Han Dynasty. Oh, you, that's funny. You need an heir to rip someone off on studio apartments. You know what I mean? So that was the angle. And it was like, there's more to it's a longer bit. But he was like, I said Han Dynasty. I just kind of said that off the cuff while I was working it out. And I was like, fuck, I said Han Dynasty. The Quinn is always doing like history stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. sure. And I was like, no, it's not my bit. You pulled Han Dynasty uh, out of thin air? Well, I was just thinking Dynasty. All right, like, that's, obvious... that's a great reference. Uh, but then uh, now I have all these new. Are you working on new shit? I got a ton of new Wait, ideas. Let's fucking try some. I mean, I'm talking bad. No, just half baked. I got some turds. raw premises. All right. I mean, I got a nice new sheet of like bullshit ideas here that I haven't worked out. Yeah. Well, I cheated on the last show because I had that Clorox thing. I've been, I've been, I wrote that yesterday. Yeah. The Clorox on the tits. I. Oh wait. This is out of order. Out of order. So Whatever. Next... Try it on us. Let's all go. right. All right. So, well, uh, I was just thinking, thinking about how women get objectified and sexualized and all that, which sucks to be a woman, but men need to tone down the, the creepiness with the cat calling and all that. But I think women could tone it up <laughs> because men, we get no love. They get a, too much love. We get no love. So let's even it out a little bit because I was at a pool party once when I was a kid and my balls popped out and... I mean, a woman puked in the pool, an old lady fainted, a kid started crying. And I'm like, if men talked about tits the way women talk about balls, you guys would all kill yourselves. Balls are gross. Balls are this. Balls are disgusting. Nobody likes balls. And I get it. They're gross. But the point is, we could use a little love. Like, if a tit pops out. We have a parade. I text you. I'm texting my dad. Hey, I, we haven't talked in 10 years, but there's a tit on 3rd Street. You got to go see it. You know, whatever. So I, the, the, the point of the joke is we need to bring that down and bring this up. And then I thought, you know, we all love cleavage. And I got the, uh, the I other. I think instead of ball, it should be dick. You think dick? Because balls are kind of gross. They are pretty dick gross. Dick is like the actual. Balls are just like. Tits are more pretty they're, they're, i mean ball cleavage does nothing yeah no one's like no one is enticed by but, but like women do like dick but they still won't get excited if a dick came out no they'd so be I think, scared I think dick works better all than right ball. maybe I i'll go dick i think uh women like a dick print in sweats do they they do so. like that yeah they do the gray sweatpants is a big thing mm -hmm. yeah okay so so that's basically the 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 meat of it and then the then meat. i talk about only fans ladies you can do only fans so like Yes, you get objectified, but you can use it to your advantage Ooh, and make like money. Turn, yeah. Whereas if I put my balls and dick on OnlyFans, I would get deplatform, shadow banned, and I I wouldn't be able to go to Thanksgiving. My dad would be like, "My coworker saw your sack online. Don't come over. You're not welcome here. We changed the locks. Whatever." I think it's funny, like that. You're like, unattractive women are making a lot of money on OnlyFans. Uh, yes. Right. I think it'd be funny if you're like. I, if I put my dick on, on the internet, people would be like, I even people who don't like what I do would be like, I'd prefer your comedy. <laughs> you <laughs> yes, know what I mean? Yes, Some, exactly. Something like that. Where, That's good. I, I like that angle a lot of like the OnlyFans, like, because you are taking a negative and making it positive. Right. Silver lining. Yeah. I like that. That's good, because women are like, I want you to like my singing or my talent, but you only like my tits. Yeah. Men are like... I want you to like my dick a little bit more, and like we want to be objectified. Yes, we want to be objectified because we objectify. Mm. Yes, yes, 
That's it that sucks. We see, no, it should be. It should be a little bit more of a middle ground. Men objectify too much to the point that, like, I mean, like. Think about some of the shit you jack off to. You're just like, the second you're done, you're like, what was I thinking? That was horrible. <laughs> 100%. You know? Not the pedo stuff. But, uh, well, my no, but, cousin. Yeah, <laughs> cousin is the yeah. worst one. I, I always remember that Atel joke when he goes, I think weed should be legal. I do. And everyone cheers. He goes, and I think if you, if you really want to, you should be allowed to fuck a third cousin. <laughs> oh. And they all go, he goes, all right, I took it too far. Yeah, yeah. My favorite thing of the Atel uh, joke, or special is he he kills he gets some big laugh and this guy stands up and he's like applauding like crazy and Attell fist bumps him and he goes get tested <laughs> <laughs> it's just an extra joke on top of the fist bump i mean the guy got a joke in every fucking nook and cranny his new special so good and the fact that like Attell will zing you on the way to zinging yeah oh. like <laughs> like i remember i was on stage with him once before he even insulted me the first time was sam you're a vampire what do you think about like so he's like insulting me on the way to insulting me <laughs> I was like dying. I was like, God damn, he's. Did, did I tell you what he, you know, Lev Fur? Yeah, yeah. You know, funny guy, big, big comedian, big dude. Physically. Uh, he, yes. Okay. He got passed in the cellar, you know, yeah. good for him, funny guy. But uh, he's in the doorway, and Attell goes, So, Lev, you do any drugs? And Lev goes, Yeah, I like some Coke, some Molly. And he goes, Mmm, everything but Ozembic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. That's, That's better good. than anything in my head. Did act. you laugh? Oh, everybody laughed. The whole fucking roof came off. Damn, he's quick. And the word conservation is it's so impressive with him. Of like course. The one that they showed online from the special was, I got hit by a bike. It's my fault. I was on the sidewalk. It's a great bit. Most Perfect. comics would be like, New York's getting rough. It's getting tough out there. You yes. know, like set up a joke. Like, you don't have to do all that. Just yeah. cut, cut, cut. Yeah, but that's fat. also why his special is shorter than most specials. Like, True. You know, it's like Good people point. Like, with the short special, I'm like, okay, but you can watch an hour and 10 minute special with less punchlines. Yeah. You Good know, point. He, he's banging it out. So then the core, the only part of this joke that works, but I like your OnlyFans thing. Yeah. That's a good, I'll just say this is, advertisers should buy cleavage space for, because I got the other day, I got the, hey, I'm up here from a lady. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, well, your, your cleavage is out. I'm sorry, whatever. But that should be advertising by Clorox. Then men would be buying Clorox, going home and doing laundry. The wives are like, look at you chipping in. He's like, I had to do a load. <laughs> and that kills. So that, that's the only part that's working, but. I think that'll help. All right, yeah. what do you got? Did I do the stepdad one? Did I run that yet or no? I haven't heard it. I don't. Think I so. can't remember what I fucking never do on this podcast, and then I I know I repeated once, and there's nothing more shameful than doing the same fucking half ass uh -huh. shit joke twice. I'll know it if I hear it. So I had one about I have a joke defending step parents. So I had a guy being like, "Oh, my stepdad," and I'm like, "Yeah, that wasn't his plan A. Believe it or not, that's not the, anyone's blueprint. No one's like, someday I'll raise the kid of the guy who came in the person I love. That'll be fun <laughs> for me and no uh, strings attached." So that's the first part. Then I have a whole Sorry. thing about like, um, like parenting, uh, and how like you know I had a joke. On, on Instagram, it got shared around a lot. It was just joking how I don't have kids, and all the comments were like, fuck you, enjoy dying alone. And I'm like, yeah, just because you have kids doesn't mean you're not going to die alone. Mm. You're fucking, what do you think? Like, best case scenario is you're on a deathbed surrounded by family. They're on their phone. They're not paying attention. You die. Right. You know, the grandkids like, fuck, we're still here. He's texting his friends. It's been 10 days. He won't fucking die. Uh. You know, and then you finally do die. And the grandkids like, RIP, grandpa. I loved you so much. It doesn't get any likes. So he pulls it. That's your legacy. <laughs> that's, Dude, that's brutal. You pull the plug on the, on the post. <laughs> you pull the plug on the post. Even, yeah. yeah. Nothing lives with you. But that's, is that too dark? <laughs> no. that's, and then. Uh, could be something too about the, you're more upset when the phone dies next yeah. to your grandfather. That, that was, that's my, actually my old bit. Remember? Oh, okay. I did that Sorry. in Conan back in the day. Oh, Oriental. I, I dropped my phone in the toilet. I'd rather lose a loved one. No, it, oh, yeah. <laughs> not my mom or dad, my aunt and uncle. Uh, no question. My grandpa right. was 89. The phone was brand new. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. That one, and I, it'd be grandpa cool. Grandpa S? Yeah, the, the joke was, the big punch of that was like, uh, wouldn't it be cool? That's how old the joke is. It'd be cool if when your grandpa died, if you got an upgrade, like a better old dude. Like, <laughs> it doesn't say the N-word anymore. I'm like, Does he still say Oriental? We couldn't fix everything. Uh, right. uh, it's the Grandpa 5, not the Grandpa 5S. Uh, That's how old that fucking joke is. Uh, <laughs> 5. That was, like a, that was like a Conan 2015. That's wild. Got yeah. Oriental onto uh, Conan, though. Well, the TBS, they let you get away That's with true. that shit. Yeah, so the parents stuff, it's funny. It's like you put out enough specials, you start writing your own shit again. I know. You're stealing I from know. yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to find new ways. There's only so many things. 
I think the stepdad is is a. There's is, more there. That's a lot there. Well, I had a thing I tried the other night that got something, but it might be. So I say, you know, uh, there's no good PR for stepdads, but it's like mm. a thankless job, kind of, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. So you know, I had a good stepdad, bad biological dad. I remember. Um, you know, but you fight with your stepdad. So I remember we were fighting once. We were yelling at each other. He was trying, he was like grounding me. And I said, you're not my real dad. And he goes, you're right, I'm here. And uh, I quoted that to like five people. He what? told me that story. I've quoted that to like oh, five people. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. You like that? Yeah, I love that. When did you hear that? Maybe here. You said it here once. Oh, I did? I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, glad I heard it's it It's a great line. Fuck. Yeah. Did I really just repeat another fucking joke? No, no, you just, just said that end part. There. Just the end. You just oh, said that part. God, I hate myself. I think that- you drink on a podcast, you forget. Of course. I think there's something with, uh, I don't know if I said this before, so now I'm worried I'm repeating, but I think there could be something with dads are firemen, stepdads are volunteer Ooh, firemen. Ooh, I love that. Because volunteer firemen are actually more heroic because they're not even getting paid and they're saving lives. And know what we always, hey, fire, we love, there's no calendar for the volunteer Pete, firemen. can you play the same clip after the clip? Just put Did them, I say this Smash before? them up together, yeah. Just put him Did saying I? that. Him saying that and him saying that. Just put them together. Wait, Wait, did I, I say that? I think so. I don't, uh, I, don't, I, don't retain, I don't retain any of this shit. Volunteer, I think there's something there. Because right. volunteer can fire you fucking, Can you remind me that after this? Cause I, don't, I think you're right. I, I like that. I'm going to play with that tonight. That's good. Ah, uh, shit. Now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> All right, let me try a different But it's brilliant. You came up with it twice. Did I, did I just repeat an entire <laughs> joke? Okay. No, no, right. You're the sober one. So you you should know, and you watch all this fucking footage. Also, right. you could say uh, you uh, you know unplug grandpa to plug in your iPhone to charge. Oh iPhone. yeah, that's something. That's true. Yeah, that, I like that angle. Volunteer firefighter. I'm writing it down because I don't trust you, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Save it for next week. Yeah, no volunteer fireman gets no love. You know, no one ever goes. Uh, you're not my real fireman. Oh. <laughs> you're a volunteer <laughs> fireman. Like, yeah, you I'm show here. Up, you show up for the fire, and they're like. You're not the real one, though. Yeah. But I'm here, motherfucker, and I got a hose. <laughs> They're like tits. Not <laughs> <laughs> tits, yeah. You're not real tits. Yeah, just because, yeah, yeah. Stepdads are like tits. Just because they're not real doesn't mean they're not cool. There yeah. you go. Yeah. There you go. Right. And either way, I'll, now. I'll jizz on both. <laughs> <laughs> I took it too far. Third cousin. <laughs> 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 All right, I got I to. Gotta, I got a couple more. All right, this is good. We're getting some work done here, goddammit. Let me write down dick instead of balls. See, this is me at my job. Dick, not balls. Balls are just funnier to me than dicks and grosser, but... What was that Colin Quinn thing about uh, don't use the straws? Oh, the yeah, they put their balls on the straws. Don't use the straws. Yeah. Use the, don't use the popcorn. They piss in the popcorn. It's a, oh, yeah. Sounds like the problem is your relatives. <laughs> <laughs> Great joke. Man, <clears throat> CQ is the fucking king. I love I loved his joke in uh, New York Story. It's on Netflix. You know, it's, uh, I rewatched that recently and how he has a whole thing about you used to ask for directions and they wouldn't, not only would they, they give you the directions, but the ritual was they had to shame you first. Oh. So they'd be like, they'd be like, where are you trying to get? And they're like, uh, then yeah. they turn to another guy. He's trying to get here. <laughs> they don't laugh at you. It's so true. Yeah, before, so true. Before smartphones, you like you just be like, where do I go? And the people would laugh at you. Yeah, yeah that's so true. fuck it. Such a he is a master observational comic. He is the master of like social interaction too. Yeah. He's so good with all that shit. Yeah, he's CQ, the king. The king. The king. Love him. Uh, hey, David Tell, you uh, you and uh, Colin Quinn. He's like, what, stagnant? That was killer. <laughs> okay. All right. This could, be, uh, this could be something. So, like every relationship, my wife hates one of my friends. You know, every, every guy has had a girlfriend or a wife who hates a friend. We've yeah. all been there. Sure. So, my friend is like, I want your wife to like me. And I like him, and he likes me, so I'm like, I want you guys to like each other, too. He's like, what do I got to do? And I'm like, he's like, what do I got to do to get your wife to not hate me? And I'm like, you're asking the wrong guy, because she, I think she hates me, too. <laughs> you know, that, that hits. Yeah. But then I want to do a whole thing where I'm like, all right, here's what you do. You got to get her. She loves Italian food. Get her some red wine. Get her some flour. Take her out. Yeah. So now he's taking out my wife, yeah. and I'm encouraging it. And they take the next step. You play with her clit. You yeah. go down on her. You work the vagina. Then you're like, fuck, this guy's yeah. fucking my wife. Yeah. yeah. And I got other people calling me like, dude, I saw your wife out to dinner with some dude. I'm like, 
Was it going well? <laughs> oh, was it good? good. Was she having fun? That's good. It's like, yeah, she looks like she's having fun. Oh, great. Oh, great. You know, so that, that could be a whole thing. And, Is that it? That's funny. Yeah, that part does okay, but it, it's still, I don't I know like, where to like, go with it. But I like that you take it to a silly place. I think I think those types of jokes just have to keep going. Yes, yes. I think it's yes. got to end with him fucking your wife. That, I think that's and where instead of getting mad, you're like, how was it? Yeah, yeah. Details. Details, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. That's that's a true story. Who who is it? I'll tell you later. All right. But uh it's <laughs> <clears throat> But I think they're they're he's making progress and uh Why did she hate him? Uh she just thought he was like a like a shitty guy, like a scummy guy and I'm Really? Like, no, he's not a scummy guy. Ari? <laughs> I'm kidding. Love you, Ari. No, Who no, was no. it? I'll tell you later. I don't want to get get it uh, out in the open, but right, fair enough. Uh, they're cool now. So we we figured it out. We did it together. But I was like, it God, took. That's like annoying, though. That you're like, like you don't have enough problems now. You're like, I know. You're trying I know. to solve his problem exactly. And he's like, he lives in another town. So she was going to that town just randomly, and he's like, what do I do? And I was like, you got to do this, this. She'll love this. If you do, get her tickets to this. And so like, he's buying her tickets and oh shit. Oh, my God. And uh, he won her over, but it was so funny because I was like trying to hook up my friend with my wife, and it's just it, I was like thinking about it, like, this is gold. This is that comedy. Is fucking hilarious. It's Damn, like it's, nice, it's nice when something ridiculous happens. Like I was, I was dealing with a realtor recently, and I was like thinking about moving, and then everything she said to me was like we're dating it's like this isn't even i'm not running a joke i'm just saying like but she would be like sam come on like work with me sam mm -hmm. and i'd be like this isn't couples counseling i don't have to do any i, I don't i don't even have to talk to you anymore right right but there was like sam i'm i'm d d work with do something yeah yeah i've, I've surrounded myself with people with pushy people in my life I'm yeah like, you ever think about that? yeah yeah i noticed you do do that what is that i think it's almost like an abusive thing like yeah. you know that the girl who keeps dating the abuser you're like you you're doing it you keep yeah. going back to these guys i bet it's my fault all right yeah what's your great line the same women keep showing up oh yeah what's what is that again i don't know i just remember the punchline yeah, i can't remember my own shitty jokes over yeah what what's your type oh no depressed women do you like depressed women no but they keep showing up it was something like that. yeah no but those it's not especially killed yeah did right. something whatever you got it'll take our word for it it was a good joke <laughs> at one time um good joke seems to care <laughs> really seems to care all right uh let me see what else uh God, it must have been so nice living back then, just because... Yeah, he looks really happy. Well, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> there's a ham and cheese on the wall for 25 cents. In my mind, I'm like, oh, ham and cheese, I can't have the bread, you know, and, and uh, uh, the whiskey. I shouldn't have too many glasses of whiskey. Like, it just seemed like we didn't know yeah. how bad shit was for you then. Like, you no probably, one was fat. No one was fat. And you're smoking. You didn't know smoking was they bad. They died younger, though. And they did by the way, younger. we do have a drinking podcast. Good point. <laughs> but... but I, but we, but I'm just saying we know how bad everything is, so it yeah. kind of makes it less fun because it I, takes I away a little. Oh, whenever I see the calories on the menu, I'm furious. I know, me too. Great peep. That's a great peep. Cheesecake, Good peep. Cheesecake Factory. You're like three thousand calories for yeah. an omelet. It's always something like we're like know. really. And then to add insult to injury, you're on the fucking treadmill trying to do the right thing, and you're like, let me see what I burned in twenty minutes, baby. Ooh. 18 calories fuck you yeah. treadmill what are you kidding me that that's like an olive at the at the cheesecake you know what the peeve is knowing knowing, knowing. that's my peeve no awareness is a peeve mm -hmm. <laughs> ignorance is bliss it's bliss it really is knowing is a peeve yeah have, have you ever this seen could a, be a bit have you ever seen an upset down syndrome i'm just saying and that was me cleaning that up. <laughs> <laughs> that was him taking a potential Seinfeld bit and making it into one of ours. <laughs> <laughs> you never see a Down syndrome guy like, motherfucker, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that act out on stage. <laughs> He's on, he's on the Tonight Show. <laughs> They're like, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> <That> was... <laughs> oh, the, the election was rigged. Why is he Italian for some reason? <laughs> <laughs> he's a Down syndrome greaser. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, my God. <laughs> I got to send you one of these things. I got to send you this shit. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> uh, leave all that in, but... <laughs>
<laughs> leave it in. You gotta leave it. <laughs> I'll take the hit. No, no, no. <laughs> no. We're both da- we're both going down on that one. Uh, That's all right. We'll just put a picture of Gillis right here. <laughs> make it okay. Let me send you this. Salakis, <laughs> check your can you yeah, I'm here. Instagram better or text? Text, please. All right. What are we doing? I, I just have one that reminded me of something I want to send. Oh, uh, okay. This one might bomb, but I think it's pretty funny. Yeah, and then uh fuck. What else? There's something else. Oh, I'll, I'll run another bit in a second. Yeah, hit me with a bit. T- All right. Oh, I texted you. Put that I on while that. I'm looking for one. That was the old fashioned text noise. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, oh wait for hey, this. I love Brian. Go. Start from the, can you start from the beginning? Yeah, let me refresh it. Hold on. By the way, those guys, I want to give a shout out. Those guys have a podcast. I felt like Hitler just then. <laughs> what? It was a joke. I, I just said I felt like Hitler. <laughs> what? Nobody here's Jewish, right? Uh, gee, I don't know. Are you Jewish, Gordon? Oh, gee, I don't know, Jeremy. Are you? <laughs> God, I had no idea. I'm, I'm sorry. I, hey, Brian, we're both Italian. <laughs> You're in. Oh. <laughs> You're in. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Oh my God. That's fucking perfect, right? That's there. great. That's comedy. <laughs> that is fucking comedy right there, baby. <laughs> Woo! Um, Take that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cut that out. I don't want to get on her bad side. Why? Wow. Well, just seems like a scary lady. You know, who runs Hollywood. Mm hmm. Um, that's great. Oh, by the way, Alex Sulkin and the other guy. Yeah, whatever, they're funny. They have a podcast, apparently, and it's gold. Dan Bolger was raving about it. I oh, he's a funny dude. I just saw him at, at your show. Yeah, he's killer. He was ripping. Killer, killer comic. So um, I got Dan Bolger in Boston. Um, let me look, I'm trying. To, I'm going through all these phones. I hate most of my shit. Um, jeez, I'm like I have all these fucking premises, buddy. They're not great. Um, I only got one more. So hold on, throw I, one at me. I'll, I'll throw one, one at you. We'll we'll call it a, a life. I got a few ideas. What's with the bunny suit? Oh, is that not today? No, it's oh, should we be wearing that? Oh, okay. Well, it's too late now, but I'll I'll do it. I'll do it for the photo. Yeah, thumbnail. Yeah, what's the point of that? Um, All right, we've got a premise that doesn't have a punchline. You do. Yeah. Oh wow. Try us. That uh, gentrification gets a bad rap or whatever. It's whatever it is. It just needs rebranding. Like I think it should be called like manifesting. Like, we manifested this neighborhood. Ah, uh, yeah, the rebrand. Yeah. All right, premise, no punchline. You should move to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, all right, I see this up there. You need a rebrand. Yeah. yeah. Because that's also something that, like, those uh, bougie white people are there into, like, I manifested this to happen. So you manifested a whole neighborhood. Right. What if you change it from, uh, we didn't gentrify we transed. Ooh, we trans neighborhood. Transition. You already made it you better. Transition. transition neighborhood. Yeah, and then you can't push back on it. Right. <laughs> oh, you're transphobic? That one, yeah. The neighborhood's different. Yeah, the don't dead name. <laughs> yeah. I said something like that to some, a woman in the crowd. Like, you, you were at the taping where the woman was, like, pretending to be British. Oh, what? Yeah, that woman, she, she was like, her, her, I was like, anyone got a problem? And she was like, yeah, my problem is my friend thinks she's British, but she's from Connecticut. And she was like, that is not true. But she really talked like that. Mm. Like, what the fuck? And I was like, that's the next thing after trans. It could be like, well, identify as British. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah. Isn't not that really appropriating that. a little? It is appropriating. It is. But I guess with another white group, you can get away that's with That's what it is, yeah. So I got, let me try one. I, did I try this one on you? Mm. I don't like when people like misuse expressions. Like I came across this thing of uh, Bethany Frankel, you know, from uh, The Real Housewives on Instagram. And she was in Emirates, first class, where you have like your own showers, mm. that fancy. And she goes, I'm so humbled to get to live this way. And I'm like, I don't think you know what that word means. Nah. <laughs> it's not... You're posting it because it's cool, not because you have humility. Like, if I fucked a movie star, that's cool, but it's not like I'd post a picture of us in bed. Like, it is with great humility that I share that Sydney Sweeney has sucked me off. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah, right. It's only because of my modesty that I can even tell you about this. And then there's something about, like, no, like, humility is if 
you post a picture of you with a legion on your lip and you're like, who the fuck gave me herpes? That's an act of humility. Yes. Showing yes. like a low point, you know? Right, right. The first yeah. part hit pretty fucking hard. I don't know about the herpes part, but we'll we'll play with that. No, no, that's great. That's great. Like, oh, I fucked Sydney Sweeney. It made me realize how ugly I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's that's a funny line. I went David Tell on that one. It made me realize how ugly I am. Mm. Yeah. What about me? He probably is gay. Yeah. Well, listen, other voice in my head. <laughs> I uh, love that. Those fucking Atel bits. I used to do drugs, but that was way over there. I love that. Like, damn, that's a great joke. He had so many on that fucking album with the... Uh, it's Gangster the Memory is the best comedy album. We talk about it too much probably on here, but... Well, Rachel put it really well. We were talking to Rachel the other night about it, and she said his jokes are so funny, but they're also interesting. Yeah. He has interesting jokes, like SeaWorld is aquatic Auschwitz. Yeah. That's interesting. You're like, yeah. oh yeah, it's a you're you're kind of calling out the uh, what do you call it mistreatment of animals with this joke relating it to the Holocaust. I mean, it's it's it, there's more there than just a joke. Mm -hmm. It's got some depth to it. You're right. Yeah, he is fucking great. Yeah, he's great. He has so many. We were texting each other back and forth while watching that. And also, you know, what I love about Dave is like. It's almost like a throwback type of comic where you really just need the audio. Mm -hmm. I know. Like, I can just walk around listening to him because the voice is so good. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, did you see when he walked through the crowd with the recorder? So funny. And, and he goes, people. Yeah, he's zigging people. He's like, ooh. And he goes, oh, this is some bald guy. He goes, I didn't know Putin had a son. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, just, it's just pure comedy. You know, you know when they uh, they get the orange juice? Concentrate. Concentrated. Concentrated. He's concentrated. Con yeah. There's no activism. There's no message. There's no nothing. It's just a guy in a skull cap and a jacket for some reason and being hilarious yeah right. he just killed it yeah all right that's something there i might have another but you go last one i got and uh because i think some of these i already did but um let's see okay this could be kind of hacky or maybe just shitty but uh you know i'm 40 now and i like beer i grew up drinking beer my whole life we buy a case of beer kegs college the whole thing and i now i'm gluten intolerant my doctor's like you're gluten intolerant you can't have beer. I still do it, but it... Yeah, I see. I drink beer with you sometimes. Yeah, it hurts and all that. I shit water and blah, blah, blah. But it just sucks that you just hit a certain age and you're like, you're gluten intolerant. And I'm like, damn, that sucks. But if I'm going to be intolerant towards anything at 40, probably best it's gluten. You know, wouldn't that suck if your friend was like, hey, I'm having a dinner party. I'm like, nah, I don't tolerate Muslims. I just can't tolerate them. It's just, yeah. and they're like, what the fuck? Where'd that come from? I'm like, uh, my doctor. Yeah, 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 yeah. It just comes with age, you know? I yeah. just got older, I realized. And then, so that kind of does it's, okay. I think it's a bigger act out if, unless it's your friend, it's the doctor doing it. Wait, The wait, doctor's wait. going, what the hell is this? He goes, jeez. You're, it's you know, oh, like, like he's checking you out. That's he's good. Like, the x-rays came back, and you're like, how am I doing? Filipino intolerant. Yes. He's like, yeah, it's very rare. Very rare, yeah. Okay, that's good. I think that's closer. It's not quite it yet, but it's like- The doctor um, is better. It's just like, the friend The friend thing is like, a person could actually say something that- Yeah, you know, good Whereas point. a doctor would never say that. That's why it's funny, right? Good there. point. But it's it's still not there. It's like a doctor saying- uh, And it doesn't have to be a race. Yeah, or, right. It could be. But. This camera up your ass tells me you can't tolerate gays. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's yeah. not bad. And you're like, that's really? It doesn't feel that bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I go, uh, so I've switched to hard liquor to be healthier, yeah. which is silly to switch to hard liquor for your health. Oh, I've, I've done it, dude. And it's, yeah. it's actually bad in other ways. Like, that's the point. You get ulcers. Yes, yes. But uh, so then I'm like, that's like saying, and then I need a thing where yeah, it's like switch to hard liquor for your health. That's like uh, beer to hard liquor. So you need like an analogy. Yeah, like, a, like going from I stopped eating meat. Oh, what do you do for protein? I eat small children or something like that. Some kind of heightened thing that's actually way worse. Meat, yeah, but that's like too. That's too silly. Too linear. So it's like got to be like. Uh, what's another thing you could switch off for health? There's also peanut allergies. I'm trying to think of other things that could. Uh, affect you later in life dairy thinking like guns maybe too could be funny like a, mm. or like a different type of self-defense or something like what's another thing that could like have a big imp could be could really backfire is what i'm thinking yeah yeah alcohol guns yeah 
Wait, what do you mean guns? Well, I don't know. Like you, like this isn't it. But I was thinking, like I switched from a for, a, for protection from a, you know a handgun to like a, <laughs> to like oh, a like giant a, gun, like yeah. a bazooka. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, that's not it. But I was thinking it's got to be like that because that's like that type of jump, right? Yeah, beer to liquor is you know soft to hard, so it's got to be something. Maybe porn. Go from like yeah, porn might be the angle. Porn's not bad. Porn's funny. Um, Stop going to strip clubs. Yeah. Now I just kill hookers strangle hookers yeah. but hard liquor is worse <laughs> that's the thing so it can't it would have to be i'm off porn you know now only strip clubs for me that's that's got to be that jump because mm. oh because it's live instead of video well liquor is worse for you than beer yeah yeah you're yeah. quitting you're trying to be healthier by being less healthier yes that's so yeah like i think going in person is probably worse than doing it at home don't you? yeah good point good point or now i just look in people's windows while they're fucked that's better oh. that's hey, a joke hey, we got all it. right we got Come on! Yeah. Come yeah. on! Teamwork, I'm writers' done, room. I'm done with uh, I'm done with strip clubs. Now I look in the people's windows while they're fucking. Yeah, that's jerk good. Off. Yeah, that's good. Save a ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. Look at and, that. And sometimes I have to run away. I'm getting exercise. Yes. Yeah. And All I'm right. trying to write. I don't have any. Per, I don't do a lot of personal material. You guys are you and list. Uh, you guys are so good with like this is happening in my life. I got a joke out of it. Only, I am not only good at that. Only because it's so hard to keep burning fucking hours, dude. I, I, mean, I know. And I'm, I don't go. The list is more personal than I am, but I. But I'll have stories every hour. Like there, there's, there'll be a couple of stories, but that's more like to fill it out, to structure it out. Like I have to put. I think I put my structure is always for every hour a bunch of jokes, then one long story, then one short story, over. That's every hour. I think. Wait, wait, say that again. That's in every hour is uh, a bunch of jokes. Yep. Like so up like top. 35 minutes something like that one long story then one short story that's i think every hour i've ever done interesting i think interesting you do two stories back to back well i think you have the one that's like the real like this is my closer but then you're like this is like your little mini extra thing yeah i, I almost, almost hear you saying stuff like and one short story and i'll we'll get out of here like after your long story yeah like, yeah and you're like that's preface smart. them saying one short thing's coming up that's smart because i think ending on a long story could take you out of a special, but but the story not being the ending, the the long one, I think is smarter because you're like you're in it. Second, yeah, you know, you'll never back out of it. And then the short one at the end, I, I think that's good good move. Um, mine is totally different. Mine is gay. <laughs> Ten minutes of gay, eight minutes of gay, eight minutes of women fucking men and women, racial. Then I go into like social commentary, school shootings, yeah. and uh, stuff like that, and then I end it. And you do a lot of, you'll do like, but you'll get towards the end sometimes, or in the middle ish, you'll do like a longer chunk. Yes, you do have yes. chunks. I have chunks. I got, I got a whole chunk on cultural appropriation. I got a whole chunk on um, white. But that's culture. your version of a story. I guess so. I guess. I mean, so. you have to just have parts where, like, if it's just one liners. It, you'd be a different you're not that type of comic no you're a no, joke no. guy but it's like anthony jeselnik or something like that's all one line or one. even he will do a story sometimes. yeah he will he will but like i feel like he's like the guy who's like the one line joke guy now yeah whereas we're like more lo longer bits probably yeah i think so yeah tosh is kind of like that tosh, tosh will do joke 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 long chunk yeah joke 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 let me try one more. I have one more. Hit me, yeah. baby. So I used to date a girl who would get really mad when uh. I pick her up at the airport. But I'm like, I'm a New Yorker. I don't drive. I don't have a car. It's like a weird request. Yeah, but she'd that's be crazy. really mad that I didn't pick her up. And she'd say, "Well, I could get raped in an Uber." And I'd be, like, and I'm so dumb that I was like, "Well, take a lift." <laughs> that line hit. And that, but then I need like so, so. Then I'm like, I don't know where to go with it exactly. The first part. This is okay. Where I say, this isn't enough. But I say like. uh well, just make sure he's like a five star rating, because then he's never raped. He'd be at least a four seven or something. You know yeah, what I mean? That's good. It needs more. I, there's something about like the one the one I tried when I initially did it, which isn't enough. Is like you know, if, well, I ended up picking her up, of course, like multiple times. Like I'd cab there and then cab back with her. It's ridiculous. Really? Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm that's a, good, a big I'm a good guy. Big. You're guess. being abused, dude. I, I know. Yeah. Realize, <laughs> yeah. realize though, that if I do a joke that might sound mean, I'm actually a good fucking person. No. So I go to get her, and then the whole time you're looking at the driver, and you're like, he went the raped. Ah. <laughs> you're like mad he wouldn't have done it. You know. That's good. That's <laughs> it good. It didn't hit. Really? Yeah. You're just mad. You're like, this guy wouldn't have done it. Well, here's where I, my brain goes. So she wants you to pick you up from the airport. And she's like, I could get raped from the driver at the airport, but. 
You can get raped from any Uber. It, any Uber driver get raped. Why does it have to be the airport rapist? That's a good. You know, point. like you get Uber, you get Uber to the grocery store and get raped. So do I have to go everywhere? The, the logic doesn't <laughs> make be sense. a funny turn. If I, if I, if I. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? The, the two most unsympathetic people that work this joke. <laughs> it doesn't. Well, you could use that excuse. Ah, I gotta go to the dentist. I might get raped. I'm like, <laughs> but, but I'm like, why? She's like, because there are people like they might something might come over them. I'm like, all right. So then I go to I go to pick her up in my car. I'm like, shit, the female driver. I might rape. No, oh, no, 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 no. that's not bad. That's, not it. that's good. That's good. Also, she could just get female drivers. Can you request that? Ooh, what about gay Uber? They should be grander for Uber. Gay Uber. Uber. And then you get raped. Gay Uber, yeah. Yeah, then you get raped. <laughs> yeah, that's the then turn. I, this is like the structure of my old subway joke. Every where I'm joke. like, you're just going to let him do that? Yeah. Remember that old oh, joke? Yes. Where the guy's jacking off. Yeah, yeah. He goes, he's jacking off to me on the train. I go, you got to stop. And he goes, I was doing it to you. And I, turn, I have to turn to my girlfriend like, you're just going to let him do that? That was like an oldie. But, gay uh, Uber. But yeah, that's a bit. Gay Uber. We need gay Uber. Goober. Goober. Yeah. Goober. No, or gay lift. Gift. Hey. Gift. It's a gift, dude. You it's get raped. A gift. It's a gift. Yeah. God's gift. Yeah. I'm, I'm at the, the airport. Women. I'm like, you need to come get me. <laughs> <laughs> this, yes. guy's, this guy's eyeballing the shit out of me. Yes. All right. There Here we, we go. go. Gay Uber, baby. All right. Come All right. on. Any, any, any wrecks or peeves or what? Oh, I, had a, I got a peeve. Yeah. It's a quickie. I can't stand. You say this around me. We're we're not hanging out ever again. Anybody who says in my heart of hearts, Oof. get the fuck out of Dodge. What is this? Your of- one man show? I know. I'm, I hate that. I got a guy. Uh, uh, he's in. He's like one of my manager people, whatever. And he's like, in my heart of hearts, I really think this is some of your best material. I'm like, shut the fuck. Up now, I don't believe anything you say. It's so dramatic, so cheesy, in so cringy. Heart of, you know heart what, of, I don't even know what that means. It's akin to people like that had me in my feels. Oh! What the fuck are you? What are you, an alien? Oh. Who are these people? Yeah, I'm furious. Goober, goober, <laughs> <laughs> you, you fucking goober. Oh, hit my, hit me in my feels. Get out. Oh. That's like those ladies who say, "Cool beans." Oh. Shut the fuck up, Kathy. Hit my feels. I want to hit you in my car. <laughs> <laughs> someone else is driving on the way to an airport. Yeah, you'll feel that. <laughs> How about uh, any any wrecks? Uh, I just rewatched There Will Be Blood. It's fucking amazing. Oh, it's fucking good. God, it's so good. I know it's a 20-year-old movie or whatever, but man, it just, oh, PTA does not miss with He's that so shit. He's so good. I, I got home kind of drunk last night. I threw on the TV, social network. So good. Great dialogue, great movie. Great dialogue. Like, every moment, man, there's dialogue where you're like, this shouldn't be interesting. I know, I know. This is not an interesting story. Yeah. A guy created a fucking app. Like, who gives a shit? But it's compelling. Riveting. And and they throw in the legal stuff, so you're like, all right, this is kind of cool. Great. Justin Timberlake's great in that. He's great. He's great. That's Sorkin. Sorkin, and then Fincher directs it. Oh, That's yeah. a fucking... Sorkin's, it's either the best thing you've ever heard or the worst thing you've ever that's heard. That's so there's true. No, there's no middle ground. Mm-hmm. That's so but true. But when he hits, dude, I mean... What's that's a the, bad Sorkin? Jeez, I can't... I can't Sounds like a sex that. movie. <laughs> what's, a, what's a bad Sorkin? Uh, <sighs> you gotta give me his discography, yeah. and oh. I could tell you. I don't feel like there's, like, a bad show, but I think some of the episodes, you're like, all right, dude, we get it. It's not like, it's, like, not exactly... Well, he did uh, that newsroom, didn't he? That was rough. I didn't like that. I thought I had moments. Like, it was so self-righteous. It was very self-righteous, but yeah, now he's a beast. I did not like that. All right, so now I know. You know what I, I, you know what I did, I liked that a lot of people didn't like was Molly's Game. That was pretty cool. Oh, I never saw Idris that. Idris Elba and uh, a very sexy Jessica Chastain. Oh, very sexy. And a very sexy Idris Elba, if I'm being honest. That's here. true. Yeah, you can't go wrong with and, uh, Elba. And the dude from Succession is in it, too. Ka- Ken Kendall from Succession. Oh, really? Jeremy Strong. I heard Bill Burr was telling me that new uh, play with Jeremy Strong and Michael Imperioli is like unreal. He's like, really? Oh, so good. That's the one that got walked in on with the climate the change climate guy. People. Yeah, that was fucking. But look police. what it did there. Now they're just spreading awareness about the play. Ah, good point. Because they handled point. it well. Good point. They hey, handle it well. Climate change. Come to my shows in Memphis. I'm, <laughs> I'm not selling shit. So come make a splash. <laughs> so I have him on uh, The West Wing, A Few Good Men as Writer, Molly's Game, uh, The Trial of the Chicago Seven, which I never saw. That ah, it was a little. Eh. <clears throat> a Few Good Men is good. Amazing. Amazing. And Sports movie. Night. 
He came Sports Night. Sports Night was good. That yeah. was great. I, there was a couple episodes where I was like, Ugh. but like overall, I I loved that show. I thought it yeah. was like it captured such a moment too. It it only missed because it was on when every show was a laugh track show, right. and it looked like a laugh track show, and there was no laugh track. I think people yes. were like confused. I thought they thought it would be something else, but it was just like a great show i love smart it. Too, yeah maybe ahead of its time and very uh, very yeah. ahead of its time too smart for the room there's a lot of shows like that in like the 90s i mean i i talk yeah. about the critic all the time before we go pull up orson wells dice any of this the wine commercial uh or the peas commercial i know the, the critic peas. or in real life the real one or the one no the real one okay it's so funny dude he's just getting shit-faced at the end of his career doing wine commercials oh yeah I haven't but, seen this in 30 oh, years. Oh, dude, Mike Lawrence and I are texting each other like he's having like audio ones only of him snapping at people being like, why would I do this in this pee commercial? And he's, <laughs> like, he's like, what would compel me to do this? He goes, you're a buffoon. <laughs> he's like, Your ignorance knows no bounds. This could and be it. Oh, this is one. Yeah. This is the it. Camera. Oh, this is real. <laughs> yeah. Take one. With overlap, action piece. So funny. He's so heavy at this point. Wow. <laughs> Look at him. He's so serious. His presence is Actually, awesome, please. Can you just do anything? No, it's, <laughs> sorry, cut. Oh, he's drunk. Rolling. Yeah, he is. 102, take two. Ah, the French <laughs> champagne <laughs> has always been celebrated for its excellence. There is a California champagne by Paul Masson, inspired by that same French excellence. It's fermented in the bottle and like the best French champagne. He's trying to read It's vintage dated. Cut. So poor my son. <laughs> Why don't you take three? Action, please. Ah, the French <laughs> champagne has always been celebrated for its excellence. There is a California champagne by Paul Masson. Inspired by that same French excellence, it's fermented in the bottle and like the best French yeah. champagne, it's vintage dated. So poor massage. The, the best part is that he just doesn't at all. He's at a point of his career where he's like, I'm only going to do like Othello and Macbeth and then these shitty commercials. Yeah, yeah. And I love the drunk beginning where they're like, action. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's exactly why you start this pod every week. Ah. Uh, we got a uh, Robert Spiegel here. Folks. I love him, dude. Yeah. He, he makes me laugh so hard. I hate to say it, there's a little Saint Germain in there. You oh can see yeah, it for sure. Oh no, he's like a great character, man. But um, Bodega Cat. I don't know if it's if we're legal yet, but it's it's close. I mean, we're we're close to being in bars in New York. Yes. We're already in some bars in Texas and liquor stores, but yes. we're very close to New York, uh, New Jersey, mm -hmm. Florida, and California. Yeah. So if you're listening and you want Big. Bodega Cat up in that motherfucker, Big it's market. happening. We have a uh, new distribution. We're making it happen. Ooh, 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 ooh. We're almost out of our whole first batch, which is like, what, 10,000, 20,000 bottles? I don't know how much we got. We got we're almost wow. out because of you much? guys. So. Uh, bodegacatwhiskey.com thank you for supporting it's only growing yeah and uh, thanks for rocking the Bodega Cat merch as well yes. we see you guys do I mean that shit when I was doing the theater tour those sold out like crazy with those selling oh yeah too. oh yeah big time and and we're getting a new bottle new website I mean we're really revamping and kicking it up a notch so uh, you're gonna be able to get it hands on fuck I mean get it online if you want but you'll be able to buy it you know in person soon. So Maybe we'll do coming. a party, like a signing or something. Let's do it. Through. We'll do it. And uh, yeah, I would love it. And uh, it'll it'll be, first place it'll be, it'll be a comedy cellar in New York City. So we're, they were, they're they putting it on the fucking menu. I think it's going to be their house uh, in their old fashions in Manhattan. So you order oh. Manhattan at the cellar, you're getting a bodega cat in Manhattan. So I'm pretty excited for that. Come by the club, get an old fash. Say hello. Here, oh, and here follow us both on uh, punchup.live yes. slash Mark Norman and punchup.live slash Sam Morell because we're posting a lot of uh, only you can see content here. It's, it's uncensored and we're getting flagged on shit like, you know, Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff. So you get it free. The only thing we ask for is your email address, for, and we're only going to blast you when we have like either a special or coming to your city. It's a really good app. Everyone's on it now. Yep. Punchup.live slash Mark Norman or punchup.live slash Sam Morell. Like this is this is a good place. 
it's like Patreon, but instead of paying us, you just give us your email. And yeah, and you get all the info. You get and a all bunch the... of free content that we're going to post. Yeah. It's only available there. So never like... any spam, which is great. Yes. No spam. We're not going to spam you. We appreciate your support. No spam. Uh, no ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, where are you going to be? You some dates, Mark? You plug. Cause I'm, is I'm... this me? This is you. Oh, okay. It's Punch Up. It's, it's your Punch Up. Punch Up. Oh, great. Punch Up. I've been going to New Haven. Love New Haven. That Frank Pepe's. Get some pizza. Or Sally's. Oh, uh, I'm a Pepe man, but yeah. I don't know if I've had Sally's. Sally's actually. is legit. All right. Uh, Philly, coming back. Um, love Philly, one of my favorite comedy towns. Memphis, Little Rock, Knoxville, Chattanooga, Syracuse. Salicuse. Salicuse. <laughs> uh Buffalo, Minneapolis, Madison, Bloomington, Evansville, L.A., Coachella, Victoria, B.C. Never been there. I hear it's a beautiful island, Vancouver, Royal Oak, Fort Wayne, West Palm, Fort Myers, Boston, Pittsburgh, and Spokane and Seattle at the Moor. Going back to the Moor. My favorite. Top five theaters, I think. Easy, easy. Hey, wait, Salakis, what's your favorite movie, by the way? Well, it's not my favorite movie, but if I can wreck something at the end yeah, of the show, sure. I'm stealing this from Benny Safdie. I saw him on a red carpet, and he was like, what are you watching? And he said... Uh, this movie called Sherman's March. I've heard of it. It's a documentary. Yes. I saw this on Letterboxd, right? Yes. Okay. It's, it's from good? like 1981. It's about this. It's a I very personal story of a guy. It's a war movie, right? No, no. It's a guy. It's a documentary about a guy following Sherman's March, which is well, the guy after the Civil War. Or yeah. The end of the war, war movie. No, it's it's not a war movie. But it's about a, a guy who is in the war, no? Correct. Sorry. Yes. Okay. But it war. turns into it turns into a personal story about him going to visit all his exes along this path. So it's just like his personal Sherman's March. Mm. Oh, that's yeah. great. So he's going through going oh, okay. through the South, all right. visiting all his exes. All right, give me another one of your favorite movies. Ooh. Uh, if it was one movie that you would describe as like the most Salacuse movie. Dog Day Afternoon. One more. Uh, Pelham? Pelham 1. Taking one a Pelham 1, 2, 3. One more. one more? What do you got in your pocket? What's oh, going yeah, on well, here? What's happening? Oh, there's... What's going on here? One more. Who's coming Taxi through the door? Taxi driver? Taxi driver, yeah. Fucking prick. Just take the shirt. Oh! Let's see. Oh, we were close. Oh, this is my favorite movie. Oh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> That's a killer shirt. Just a, uh, oh, look at that. You can wear that and jizz all over it. There you go. Uh, all I got all I got on the road is uh, right now, I'm going to add a lot of stuff, workout oh. dates. I got to write a new hour. But uh, Atlantic City, June 22nd. Uh, with Chris DiStefano Hell yeah. us together. I'm excited for that one. It's going to be fun. So, But I'm going to add some stuff soon. So you'll be doing city spots like a madman. I'm going to be popping around. Yeah. Nice. I'll be, I'll be on your shows. Bring it on. I'll be coming through. I heard you killed on Tuesday, Ruby. Was, they were good. Ruby said that. They were good. I All fucked right. But you know what? I bombed in the set right before that. So it's it's an up and down process doing That's this That's the game. Show. That's but, the game. Got to work love it out. It. I love it. I'm I'm loving the process right now. It's like I, I'm 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 embracing it fully. And I was I was talking to Quinn about it because he's in the same place, and we're both like, you feel alive. You feel like you're writing. So I'm yes. I got I got to people gotta have... think it's time to see you. Like when your hour's done, this is the fucking time to see somebody. <laughs> it's so much more interesting. <laughs> There's a reason this calendar's empty, but I'm <laughs> trying to build it up. Well, it, you, if you're a comedy fan and you like the process, yeah, go see how the sausage is made. But uh, there's nothing, nothing like a, it's better to eat a good killer sausage. hour. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. We love you guys. Thanks for listening. Comedy. Sunday's the day for my next bender. A bit of fever wreck, you know the beer juice close. I've had a little too much bourbon. And Norman's talking shit about the fucking post. And I get down in the same.